Leafs win. Three to two in overtime. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another Rate That Leafs game, episode 33. This one, where the Leafs face off against the Ottawa Senators. What are the things that I need to say in this game, about this game, regarding this game? Well, number one, Jack Campbell. Please stay in your net. Number two, Austin Matthews is still without a goal. Should we be worried? No, we shouldn't because he's going to win the Selkie anyways. And number three, Jason Spezza scores in his third straight game. What a coincidence. This game was very hard to watch because it was a lot of back and forth by the Senators and Leafs. Unfortunately, Campbell made a few mistakes with the puck that ended up in the Leafs' own net, and then the Leafs would come back the other way and score. It happened the first time, the second time it was kind of vice versa, but the Leafs would end up winning this game. A very weird game, to say the least, and the first goal is probably one of the weirdest. 5.14 left in the period, Connor Brown would go off for hooking. Not even a minute later, Austin Matthews goes off for interference. There's a four on four for a minute and 11 seconds. And then 22 seconds left in the Senators power play. Mikheyev would I get a partial break, but Thomas Shabbat would slash him and we're going back to four on four. So there's 22 seconds left of four on four hockey before the Leafs go to the power play. Can anything bad happen? I, I, uh, yeah. The Sens would dump the puck into the Leafs zone. Jack Campbell would take it. He would take it behind the net. He would get pressured with the Senators player coming at him, he tries to throw it out, and what happens? It goes off that Senators skate right in front of the net to Connor Brown. Empty net. He puts it in. one nothing Ottawa. Was that the weirdest thing that happened in that period? Well, no. It actually surprisingly wasn't. At one point in the period, the Senators had six players on the ice. The Leafs were in the Sens zone, and there was six guys. There was no penalty, no call from the ref. I, no, I don't even know if any players saw it. I mean, a lot of the fans saw it and they're tweeting about it, but nobody saw it. It went missed and the Leafs didn't get a power play out of it. It's a great start to the game for the Leafs. But then we head to the second and what would happen in the second? Well, the Leafs would tie it up. Under six minutes left, Hyman puts a pass through the slot. It deflects off Brody's stick, hits the crossbar off Eli McKayev into the net. The Leafs tied at one. The referees initially waved it off as no goal. And then after review, Eli McKayev's goal would count. He has his fifth of the season. And I'm going to be honest with you. Halfway into that game, I thought 100% the Leafs were going to to be goalied. Anton Forsberg was playing in his first NHL game in over a calendar year. He only had one game under his belt, and that was with Belleville against the Marlies on the weekend. And he comes into this one, puts up on a massive, amazing performance, and I, I, I did again think, oh no, it's going to happen. The Leafs are going to get goalied, and they almost did, but they scored, and it helped. But then we go to the third period. And what happens? Well, not really anything. Nothing for the Senators for the first 11 and a half minutes because that's the first time they would get a shot on net in that period. And then there's a play in front and it would go behind the Senators net. Wayne Simmons would get tripped up. There is not a call. And what happens after? Well, Wayne Simmons is explaining his case. They go to commercial break. And as they come back, the camera pans over to Simmons talking to Eric Furlat. And Eric Furlat grabs right here, which is where the mic is for the referees. And we know Tim Peel got, I mean, not really fired. He was let go by the league. He was going to retire anyways on that front. But again, I don't understand why. I, I do get why he's holding his hand here, but th this should not be allowed. Now on the Tim Peel incident for a second, I understand why fans are upset but I also understand why there's pushback from a lot of people. There is games, like I said, where hockey players understand what the refs are doing. The refs are trying to take control of the game, and sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. And in this case with Tim Peel, it was a bad call. It was a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. And unfortunately, that lost him his job that he was going to retire at the rest of this at the end of the season i can understand though why some players believe it's okay i was listening to overdrive the other day carlo koliakovo was on there and justin williams they asked justin williams about it and like all the players know tim peel and i understand fans are mad but again players know the type of refereeing that's going on and they are okay with it and i really believe 
that if the players are okay with it, we should be okay with it too. I don't know if that really makes sense. But again, if the re players don't have a problem with how the referees are refing the game, then we shouldn't really have any problem with it either. I mean, at some point, yeah, there's going to be some missed calls. Players are going to be upset, and that's when we are upset as well. And then sometimes, again, refs miss calls, players don't say anything. We will be upset, visibly upset. There's so much involved with this, and I understand as well, betting comes into this. And you can't have refs taking penalties on a team just because they want to call a penalty on a team. That has hurt the betting process, and that will hurt the betting process going forward. So I understand that point as well. But here... With Eric Furlat covering his mic, I don't believe that's his thing. Like, why would you have a mic in the first place? If you're going to cover your mic, they might as well abolish the microphone and take it out. I don't believe referees should cover their mics. If they are going to say something, they should be knowing that whatever they say is hot. And when I mean hot, I mean on the mic. And it could be live. And it could be on air like it was with Tim Peel. But again, I'm gonna say it, I get referees are afraid of getting something caught on the mic, but I don't believe if there is a mic in place for the referees that they should be able to sit there and hold it because I don't know what the referee's saying. I, not a lot of people, not, not really anyone does. And he could be saying something about a call that he didn't want to make because it would help overturn the game or just something like that. And I don't believe that should be allowed in the game of hockey. Anyway, so back to the Leafs game. That was kind of a little babble on about something. I would just I just wanted to get it out there. I didn't really have any time to discuss it. Jason Spezza would score. It would be a puck that's dumped in to the Senators' zone. Shabbat would turn it over. Kerfoot, Spezza, slap shot off. Zaitsev stick into the back of the net. Spezza's eighth of the season. And the Leafs lead 2-1. to one. And we can now breathe. Because the Leafs are winning! Ha! 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 What happened next? Well, the Leafs would have the Senators dump the puck into Toronto's zone. And guess who comes out to get it? Jack Campbell! Jack! What are you doing? You stay in your net! I get that you could have gone out and got this puck and cleared it. You tried. And it didn't work out because it would go on the stick of Alex Formenta and he would beat Campbell. And the game is tied back up at two. Jack! Do not ever again leave your net. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for yelling at you. I should not be yelling at you. You've probably apologized for every single goal that scored on you in your entire life. And you probably apologized for that first one. And I know, I'm pretty sure you apologized for that second one in the dressing room after the game. So, I'm, again, I'm sorry for yelling at you. Anyways, though, we go to overtime. And what happens? Well, the Leafs would be caught in the Senators' zone. There would be three cents coming the other way. And Austin Matthews... Is the only one back, and what happens? One player tries to get it up to the other, and Austin Matthews cuts it off with his leg. He would come in the other way, make a nice move, and get around Anton Forsberg, but he hits the side of the net. And what happens? Mitch Marner picks up the puck, gets it to Justin Hall. What does he do? He snapped it past Forsberg. The Leafs win the game, three to two, in overtime. And a live look at Pierre Dorian. He's sipping his water and throwing it. He is absolutely livid as the Leafs defeat the Ottawa Senators. So the rating of the game now, which we all love. This one was a very good one. It's actually part of my favorite number. And if you can guess it, pause the video, put it in the comment section down below. Now though, for the rating of the game, a 7.7 .7 out of 10. You all gave me a 7.7. .7. The tweet that I put out got 7 likes, which is my favorite number, 777. It's a lucky number, maybe. I, I like to believe it is, and this time, the lucky number helped the Leafs get the win. Actually, it was Austin Matthew Selke winning performance that got the Leafs to win, Nick. Yes, it was, but it was also Jason Spence's goal, Elian Mikheyev's goal, Jack Campbell's play in the net, not out of it, and that helped the Leafs win this one. I don't know how upset I would have been if the Leafs lost this one. I mean, it, they took it to overtime. It was unfortunate that Jack Campbell... Couldn't have made those plays. He said after the game, it was sort of a mix-up with Justin Hall, and they both said it's it's all right. I mean, Jack Campbell said that he should never make those plays again, and, I mean, it, it happens. There is a little bit of talk on Twitter tonight about why we are not talking about Jack Campbell making those bad plays like we would Frederick Anderson if he was to make those plays. Well, Jack Campbell has been playing, and he's had two straight shutouts with the Leafs, and this one, of course, it was a little mix-up. 
but it, he's been consistent. And with that being said, Frederick Anderson was not the most consistent, and he was frustrating a lot of people. If Jack Campbell goes down that same road of being consistent, there won't be that problem. But if he goes down the road of inconsistency, keeps making these plays outside of the net, then there would be a problem. I doubt that will be ever the case. Jack Campbell's a nice guy. He'll play the puck nicely. He'll give some nice stick taps. All will be okay. I hope. At the end of the day, though, we can't be really comparing the two yet. I mean, Jack Campbell has only played, like, four games or five with the Leafs this season, so there's not really a big enough size of judgment to declare that he is like Frederick Anderson. It's a small sample size so far, which is why people aren't getting upset. That is where I'm going to end off tonight's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you really enjoyed it, subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of tonight's game. And also, comment down below whether you think or not I should stream more often. I did it today before the Leafs game for two hours, played some Warzone. That was a little bit of fun. I actually did it on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Nicholas Barden. And yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if I should do that. Go, least go, and guess what? I don't have a mic here. I'm not covering it. But this is what it would sound like if I covered this one. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, I, I don't think they could hear the referee that covered it tonight.